Because I'm just wondering the negative sentiment in the market, will that have any impact? Will that derail uh, efforts to, you know, to boost sustainability? Thanks for having me to here today, Haslund. Well, it's uh, certainly an interesting time for all of us here. And uh, I think the impact of climate change will remain to be critical, regardless of uh, health crisis and regardless of what's going around the world in the financial markets. It is real. It is going to impact us in the long run. So at SP Group, we are staying ahead of the curve and coming up with new solutions that would enable our customers to lead a low-carbon lifestyle. But you know, earlier we talked about Singapore's efforts wanting to halve uh, its emissions by 2050. How does it get there? Right now, it is an uphill task. Definitely. I think everybody has to do their part in the climate change, uh, in combating and reducing our carbon emissions. So at SP Group, we are rolling out a couple of initiatives in which we want to enable our customers, be it on district level, corporates, uh, individuals and households, to enable them to take stock on what they can do for meeting uh, our climate change targets. So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, for individuals, we are rolling out a carbon footprint tracker that enables our customers to take stock on what their carbon emissions are and to do something about it. And that to us is important because we believe that awareness is the first step to making behavioural change. Um, another uh, solution that we are coming up with and or we have launched actually is a blockchain place platform for, for renewable energy certificates. And this allows our corporate customers to be able to support renewable energy uh, projects um, anywhere in the world and be able to meet their green targets. And these are solutions in which we are rolling out for everybody, uh, be it our corporate customers or our individual households, to get on this path to lower carbon emissions. Um, I believe it was Singapore's first president who nominated the air conditioner as the most important invention of the 20th century. Um, so with a country so reliant on air conditioning, how do you make that carbon neutral? Well, it's certainly a challenge for us here in Singapore being a tropical country. And on the district level, you know, we have a solution called district cooling in which uh, we think it is fundamentally to helping uh, our country lower our carbon emissions. So how this works is that for every building, instead of them having individual chillers, we're able to group the chillers and using centralised chillers that buildings can share to be able to derive economies of scale and therefore energy savings. So at uh, Marina Bay Sands, uh, you're right here in Singapore, underneath the complex is uh, the world's largest district cooling plant underground that's operated by SP Group. And this uh, solution has enabled the complex to achieve more more than 40% energy savings, and this actually translates up to about uh, carbon emissions from 10,000 cars. So this is a solution that we have been rolling out for buildings, and in future we are rolling out for uh, residents at the upcoming new town in Tenga. So energy savings can be achieved, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, the Singapore's electricity needs still come from non-renewable resources. What's the plan for the rest of it? Uh, does the country buy carbon offsets? Yes, so I think the Singapore government has set uh, very aggressive targets. And as I mentioned, we believe that everybody has to do their part to reduce carbon emissions. So on a district level, you know, for households, uh, corporates, individuals as well. Um, so, uh, you know, we have targets to go renewables. I think the, the Singapore government has uh, moved up its targets to achieve uh, solar uh, by 2 gigawatt peak by 2030. Um, we also have targets to reduce energy uh, usage by 36% by 2030. And beyond all of this, there are other means in which, you know, we can harness, for example, solar on uh, reservoirs, which we are investing heavily in, uh, vertical solar on buildings, for example. So these are new technologies that SP and many other players are uh, investigating and, and harnessing uh, for, for us to go uh, carbon neutral. Uh, one initiative that SP is investing in and piloting today is a hydrogen energy system. And this allows us to test whether hydrogen could be a safe and effective means for us to power our homes and offices uh, with zero carbon emissions. And so we are testing it, the technology in our premises and uh, staying ahead of the curve to see you know, how widespread we can deploy it here in Singapore. 
beyond that, there are tools that the, the, the government uh, and Singapore can harness, for example, carbon offsets, which we would be using to support uh, projects uh, overseas and here in Singapore, um, so that beyond our limited land space, we can deploy carbon offsets and even renewable energy certificates to meet our targets. Uh, May, speaking of uh, energy, we have U.S. natural gas dropping to its lowest in 21 years. Now, I also want to take a look at Singapore's electricity market that was liberalized about two years ago. How, how has this panned out? Has it really benefited the consumers? Well, I think the benefit is that everybody now has a choice of whom they want to buy electricity from. Uh, you know, you now have a choice to buy from different suppliers. You can enjoy up to about 20, 30 percent uh, in savings in your electricity bill. And this has been a key benefit of the liberalization of the energy market. Um, the other interesting outcome is that you can also choose to buy green electricity through different suppliers. So I think this benefits us uh, as electricity consumers in the long run in meeting our green targets as well.